Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show. What do we do? We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be juicy. You know why? Cause it's Friday! Let's get started, it's time for Hot Topics. because Babyface is here. Um, I could have sworn I met Babyface baby before in our studio, but I think it might have been out socially or something where the music is loud and you really can't hear what people are saying, so it's just kind of like. <laughs> it's like. So this will be our first time meeting and sitting and talking and stuff. I wonder if he'll wear sunglasses and be all evasive or will you keep your sunglasses upstairs, baby face, and talk to us in the eyeballs? Yeah, yeah. And, and Tammy Roman is here. Well, you know, um, we'll be talking with Tammy a little bit later on and uh, find out all what's going on with her. In the meantime, Kim Kardashian's robbers have been caught on tape, all five of them. <laughs> no, all five of them, okay. Now, the weird thing is, is that, you know, here in America, particularly here in the tri-state area, you know, uh, here in the New York, New Jersey area, there are cameras every place, including in many people's houses you know, to spy on the families. Like, <laughs> what's my daughter doing when I'm not home? <laughs> Let me see. Anyway, street cameras caught footage um, that has just been released of um, the five men, there's one, there's two. No, honey, no, then the other three are on bicycles. This is at 3.48 in the morning. There's number three, there's number four. Number four, parent, wait, number four. Number five is the one with the bag of jewels because he's, he's, <laughs> He's driving low, heavy, and slow. <laughs> By the way, I think I need an eyelash glue on aisle two during commercial break. <laughs> My lashes are laying low. <laughs> anyway, so what's the deal with this? What the deal is is that, and you know, I always can correct myself if I'm wrong. I don't know how long you've been watching this show, but I know how to eat my crow. <laughs> Um, I feel, if, the, this, if this is a true story, I feel very bad for Kim. And I, um, you know, I applaud her for staying out of the spotlight for 18 days. I know that's very difficult for her. Uh, no, I know that's difficult for her because she's built her brand off of being on social media and hawking things and having you all be interested for no reason, but you're interested. <laughs> I, don't mean, I don't mean that in a laughmatic type of way. New word. 
don't mean that in a laughmatic type of way. I mean that in a, you know, I, I, I feel for her and I feel like the people who are surrounding Kim at this particular time might not understand. You know, Kanye, Kanye is more than a husband. He's a performer himself. A lot of times, you know, if you're with another performer and you do the same thing, they feel as though, okay, you sit down for three minutes, but then get up and get back out there. This is what we do, yeah. you know? I, uh, um, you know, I, I suspect that also because he married her because of being what he consider, considers the most beautiful woman in the world in like a Barbie-esque type of way, he dresses her, he tells her where to stand, how to pose and how to do her hair and things like that. And she, is, she has been his muse. So she's still sitting down 18 days and going. Kanye is gonna get tired of this. I don't believe that he will fully support her of this. The word on the street is, is that she wants to, you know, quit this entire thing. I don't think that that's necessary to say, Kim, because you will end up eating crow back yourself. <laughs> and I could always upchuck it and give it back to you. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like if she just downsized her current operation by 50%, she would be doing better today than she was three months ago or one year ago. You know, you don't have to go away all the way, Kim. People love you and I, I totally get that. And no, I don't expect your mom to support you fully with this, not for nothing. Mom is busy moisturizing, she's busy. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a, when a woman gets to a particular age and her kids are all grown and stuff, can you all handle your own stuff? Do you see me over here battling menopause, osteoporosis, <laughs> trying to hold on to my young black boyfriend? Would you leave me alone? You know? And I don't think that Courtney, like the, I, I, in my mind, her sisters are trying to be as supportive as they can, but Courtney can only be but so supportive to her siblings when she's got her own three kids and her own baby's father and her own life to figure out. And that is not to say anything bad about Courtney, but what I'm trying to do is understand as an adult why it is that sometimes as adult siblings, you are not necessarily there for your other adult siblings. You know what I mean? Uh, Kendall has got this modeling career. She's busy in Paris. Kim. I'm young and I'm busy and I'm doing it. Kylie, look, I got my man who buys th stuff and has it repoed. <laughs> like, Tyga is in court right now and people are talking. Kylie has got bigger fish to fry than worry about Kim and whether or not, you know, she was tied up in a bathtub. And then, you know, finally we have uh, Chloe who has never looked, in my opinion, better in her life. <laughs> never. Chloe has got her new jeans line and her piece of lingerie. And this is the most recent picture. She's wearing the dampening hair, Suzanne. You know, the dampening I hair. I do that. I, you wanna I, do it? I wanna try it. I think I'd look hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna try it. We're gonna order you in a bunch of extensions. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do you wanna play? Yeah, I'll do it. No, really. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. I got nothing to lose. Yeah, I got nothing to lose. <laughs> Brendan's back there, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think um, Kardashian fans will still watch the Kardashian show, even if Kim is not there. And here's why I'm gonna tell you they will still watch, because Kim, is, and Kim, you are still beautiful. This is not a slight to you, but you are an elder statesman in the family. Aww. People now are looking for your poppin' younger sisters. Yeah. They are more enamored with Chloe's dramatic transformation. Yeah. And dare I say, people care more about Scott drifting in and out and seeing what he's doing. So, so Kim, you take your time, you come back when you're ready. Um, I'm sure most of your fans will be there when you're ready, but the most important thing is that, you know what, one more, th one more thing. 
that I don't like that I saw. They were questioning um, um, Kim being tied up in the bathtub. And they, and they said on TV, they were like, yeah, well, she was bound at the wrist and bound at the ankles, but she wasn't thrown in a bathtub. She was thrown on the bathroom floor. I was like, same difference. What are you all saying? <laughs> bathtub, bathroom, you, you know what I mean? Well, Kim wasn't by herself. She had, you know, a bunch of her friends that were there. They left 30 minutes before the bad guys came. I said, that means she was by herself, stop. <laughs> Like, if this really happened to this woman, then this woman has experienced the worst in terms of, you know, fear and crime. Ugh. <laughs> Suzanne, will you really wear extensions? I mean, I don't know about the extensions, but I think I could try that whole wet Look. No, the wet look looks best though when it's long and beachy like a mermaid, like uh, Daryl Hannah in uh, Splash. Oh, huh. Do you know what I mean? Sexy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, okay. Okay. But can I take the extensions out? We'll use clip-ins. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, Sierra is backing down on her lawsuit um, with um, her ex future, you know, her ex-husband future? Her ex-boyfriend? Boyfriend? Boyfriend. Baby's okay. father. Remember, Sierra filed a $15 million lawsuit, um, defamation of character, claiming that Future was damaging her reputation and causing her to lose money. Like, every time Future would talk greasy about Sierra in public, you know, Sierra is trying to make us believe that that was making her, like, you know, lose endorsements. You know, maybe, you know, she could have been the new, you know, I wear glasses spokesperson or the extension spokesperson. But then what she's insinuating is people look at her and say, oh no, Future is talking, you are bringing way too much mess to the front door of our nice company and we don't wanna be involved with you. Well now Sierra has, they're saying no case because she's actually making more money than she did before Future trash talked her. Okay. So, if you're making more money than Future before he trash talked to you, is part of that money marrying Russell? Cause now, I mean, you're, well, you know, what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. You know, prenup schmenup. <laughs> um, uh, um, Sierra, leave Future alone. L Sierra, let it go. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Future, like so many of these other fellas out here, whether it's Drake, Nick Cannon, Future, there's a slew of them. They don't have love for one particular, like these boys are busy enjoying their lives. And there were a slew of women doing the same thing. Taylor Swift, Sierra, I mean, not Sierra, but um, Rihanna. You know, so he's enjoying his life, Sierra. And by the way, they're insinuating that you're pregnant. I don't know if you're pregnant, but I've, exam I've been examining some of your costumes and they aren't as fitted and, um, as they usually are. I don't know what to say except for if you're pregnant, congratulations. If you're not, you don't need the stress. Um, you know, fighting with uh, Future, because you want to make a, a, a family with Russell along with baby Future, but you got, want your own family with him. So, you know, good luck. Leave Future alone. Future, good luck. Sierra, good luck. All you all, good luck. You know there's some people on TV who, you know you couldn't be friends with, but you like them through the TV. <laughs> because they are slightly crazy with a tick. Yeah. Jackie Christie is one of those people. Okay, so, you know, I enjoy a Basketball Wife episode, and uh, Tammy, who's gonna be out here later, is on this particular episode, but this is not about Tammy, this is about Jackie and her daughter, Takara. Takara and Jackie have been estranged for many years. Takara was only three years old when Jackie and Doug got together. So they're saying that Doug was basically, you know, a stepdad. I don't know where the real dad is, but you know, a stepdad. And there's Doug Christie, and he gets led around by Jackie. 
And Jackie has a slight tick boom. And she likes brown juice at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but here's, here's the sad part, okay? Takara recently started a GoFundMe page to help her with her eight-month-old son's medical bills. Okay, so Jackie Christie is a grandmother no. to Takara, her daughter's son, who has a GoFundMe page for $3,000. Now, if Doug Christie was paying for you all to go to Portugal, Jackie, every time you walk in a room, your bag game is slaying. You know, you, you, know, you do fabulous things in your own Jackie Christie way. $3,000 for you all is nothing. Why does your daughter have a GoFundMe page? Unless, you know how these kids are. Takara wanted to purposely embarrass her mother. See, set up the page without telling her mom and her stepdad. You know what I mean? I have no idea. Maybe Tammy knows more. <laughs> but you know what though, Takara, young lady, you're not 16 years old, you're 26. Oh, 26? Uh -huh. Cara girl, you're a grown woman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Takara should have called her own mom behind the scenes and had a mature conversation. It's $3,000. What has happened is Takara has set up this GoFundMe page and you suckers have bought into it. Guess how much money Takara has? She's got her $3,000 thanks to you. No, hold on. <laughs> Plus an extra $11,000 to do whatever she wants. $14,000, that's what you gave her. And this is the daughter of um, money. $14,000, you all better watch what you go and find somebody. <laughs> Just saying. And this whole story is good for our business here at Hot Topics and with the Hot Topics Bureau and you all nosy in the audience and you all watching. But in, in actuality, as a grown woman, I can tell you, this is not good for um, um, family relations. This, this is not, we should not know anything about this, but as long as we do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still so reading? Good. What? Are you still reading? I'm still reading. I'm on chapter five. Okay. Nothing to report yet. Okay. Toya's book is good. Toya, um... Toya, uh, Toya Wright. Toya Wright. All right. <laughs> That's your weekend reading. Yep. All right. Keep reading. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, here at Hot Topics, we only talk sports when sports meets the intersection of... It's time for a sports report. Yeah. Head it. So Tom Brady's wife, Giselle Boonchan, wants him to retire. Well, Giselle reportedly loved having Tom to herself when he was suspended for that deflate gate thing. I don't know how she could have loved that though. Because to me, if he's suspended, he has an attitude every day. Walking around angry. Like, ew. Anyway, but she loved it. And so now she wants him home to help her raise the children. Now, you know, Giselle is a former supermodel. She still gets interest, but not as much interest as, you know, back in the day. She's 37 years old. He's now 39 years old. Um, sports analysts and people who look at bones from afar through the TV say that he has at least four more years to play. Well, I venture to say, if he plays four more, like you don't want him when he's done and dusted. If, they're, if he's 39, I think now would be the time for him to retire while he can still do a deep knee bend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she's mostly retired and maybe they can come to an agreement like, okay, Okay, baby, you play two more years until you're 41, and I will be here to support you. In the meantime, you make sure that you stay well-spoken, and he's very well-spoken. 
uh, maybe you um, enroll him in evening classes at Boston University, Giselle, <laughs> just to make sure that he understands the whole logistics of being a sports commentator. People would love this. You could be, Tom, you could be the next Troy Aikman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. But you have to know how to get out before the, the sports anger seeps in. And we all read about the sports anger, you know, when they play too long and they're angry about everything when they stop and everything hurts and they're no good to anybody. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you all are a beautiful couple. Figure out how to make it work. There's gotta be some sort of common denominator. We'll be watching and following this story because we're nosy. <laughs> so we've got more fantastic show for you, everybody. Up next. From Basketball Wives LA, real life hot topic, Tammy Roman is here. So grab a snack and come on back. How you doing? We've got lots more great videos for you. Just press here to watch the latest juicy hot topics. Press here for celebrity interviews. Go behind the scenes with our after show or simply subscribe and get them all. I love you for watching.